It's so exciting to know that the whole Bible is about Jesus Christ. He is a central theme of the Bible and it can be seen from cover to cover. Right in the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi, he can be seen in types, in shadow, in patterns and figures. And it's so amazing that reading the Bible to see Jesus is heartwarming and it's so encouraging and build us up. The Bible said that when uh, the two disciples on the road of Amos talking about Jesus, the Bible said Jesus drew near to them and they did not know it was him. Jesus began to reveal himself unto them from the Old Testament. And the Bible said that they said, did it our heart burn in us when he began to show himself to us from the Old Testament? So also it is that Jesus can be seen in every page of the Bible. So today, I just want us to see Isaac as a picture of Jesus Christ. Isaac as a picture of Jesus Christ in Genesis chapter 22. There are a lot of pictures of Jesus that can be seen in the life of Isaac, which when we see begin to make us read the Bible to see Jesus in every page of the Bible. First, let's remember Isaac's birth was prophesied by an angel to Abraham and his wife. If you read Genesis chapter 18 verse 10, I read from the NIV, it says, Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. So Isaac's birth was prophesied by an angel to his parents. Jesus' birth was also prophesied in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. That a virgin shall give birth to a son, he shall be called Emmanuel. And also not only that, an angel also came to Mary in Luke chapter 1 verse 31. It can be seen there, he said, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you shall call his name Jesus. So just as Isaac birth was prophesied by an angel to the parents, Jesus birth was also prophesied by an angel to his mother. So both of them were birth were a miracle. Because Isaac's parents were aged. His father was 100 years, his mother 90 years. And the mother has long passed manipulation. There was no medical or scientific proof that a woman who was 90 years would have given birth, but because of God's word and his miracle happened that Sarah gave birth to Isaac. And our Lord Jesus Christ was also born out of a miracle. He was conceived of the Spirit in the womb of Mary without her meeting any man. This can be seen in Luke chapter 1. Verse 34 to 35. Thus, he did not get his DNA or blood from his earthly father. No. It was the Holy Spirit that came upon Mary and Mary conceived. And that which she conceived was of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So Isaac's name was given to his parents by God before he was born. In Genesis chapter 17 verse 9, he says, And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant with his seed after him. So Isaac's name was given to his parents. So also our Lord's name, our Lord Jesus Christ's name, was given to his parents before he was born. An angel said to Joseph, And ye shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sin. That is in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Isaac was a promised child and seed of Abraham. Through whom God will make his seed become as the dust of the earth. God said to Abraham, he will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. In Genesis chapter 13 verse 15. Or as numerous as the stars in Genesis chapter 15 verse 5 or as the sun which is upon the sea shore in Genesis chapter 22 verse 17 and Isaac was that seed of promise through whom the Abrahamic covenant 
came to the children of Israel. But Jesus Christ is the true seed of Abraham. The promise talked about, God promised to Abraham was fulfilled in Christ. Because Galatians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promise made. He said not to and to see as of many, but of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So the seed that God taught that through Abraham's seed he will bless the world was not truly Isaac. It was through Isaac that the Abrahamic covenant came to the children of Israel. But the true seed of Abraham, through which God blessed the whole world, is Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ was the true seed of Abraham. So Jesus is the reality of the seed of Abraham. So the Bible said the seed of God that was promised to Abraham is Christ. So the Bible said it is true Christ, that is the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Galatians chapter 3 verse 14. So, the blessing of Abraham came upon the Gentiles, not through Isaac, but it came to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. So, Jesus Christ was the true seed of Abraham. And therefore, if you are believing in Jesus Christ, you need to know that you are blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. And not only that, you are blessed with every blessing or every Abrahamic blessing belong to everyone that is in Christ. Because we are the true spiritual seed of Abraham. Anyone in Christ has possession or is entitled to every blessing that God promised to Abraham. So Abraham's blessings are ours. Alright, let's continue. So, in the sacrifice of Isaac in Genesis chapter 22, Abraham was a type of our Heavenly Father. If you are to look at it, seeing Isaac as a picture of Jesus Christ, that his father, that is Abraham, can be seen as a type of our heavenly father. Because the Bible says that uh, Abraham's previous name was Abraham, which meant exalted father, before God changed his name to Abraham, and his wife Sarai to Sarah. So Abraham means exalted father, and Abraham means father of multitude. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 2, he says, And God said to Abraham, Take now thy seed, thy only son Isaac, whom thou love, and get thee into the land of Morah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell of. So God said that Isaac was the only son, or the last son, of Abraham. We know that Isaac wasn't the only son of Abraham because there was Ishmael. But I said that the son down loved it. So Isaac was the son that Abraham loved. And God said Abraham loved, he should take the son that he loved because God was going to give us his only begotten son, the son that he loved to the world through whom that the world might be saved. So, just as Isaac was the beloved son of his father Abraham, which is a picture of our Heavenly Father, so also Jesus Christ is the beloved son of God. And God told Abraham to take his son and go and use his son as a burnt offering for him on Mount Mora. It was the same Mount Mora that you know, theologians said that it was the Mount of Calvary where Jesus Christ was crucified for us. So, Isaac was supposed to be crucified or killed on Mount Mora, just as Christ was crucified for our sins on Mount Mora, that is on Calvary. He died for us on Calvary. So, God said, Isaac was the only son of Abraham whom he loved. What did the Heavenly Father say of Jesus when he was being baptized by John the Baptist before he began his ministry? He said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. After John the Baptist baptized Jesus, 
The Bible said that the Spirit came upon Jesus and a voice came from heaven and said that this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus was also the beloved Son of God just as Isaac was to Abraham. Just as the Bible said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Only begotten Son. So you can see that Isaac was the beloved son of his father, just as Jesus was the beloved son of our heavenly father. So we go to Genesis, we, Genesis chapter 22, verse 3 to 4. We are doing it from verse to verse. 3 to 4, it says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clothed the wood for the bed offering, and rose up and went unto the place of faith God has told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. So it took Abraham three days to make the journey on Mount Morah. It is also interesting to know that from the time of Jesus' baptism, when he began his ministry, until when, when he went to Calvary, the place of the sacrifice was three years. So, just as it took Abraham three days to reach Mount Mora, in Bible, like one day is like a, a, a year. So, Jesus, you know, started his ministry for almost three years and died on the cross of Calvary for us. So, that is also a picture of Jesus Christ for us. Then we go to verse 6. Abraham laid the wood for the sacrifice on Isaac's back. After reaching Mount Mora, he put the wood that was going to be used for the burnt offering at the back of his last son, that is Isaac, who is a picture of Jesus Christ. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. Jesus was also made to carry his wooden cross at his back. So this is also a picture of Jesus Christ. So we go to Genesis chapter uh, 22 verse 7. It says, On the way up on the mountain, Isaac asked his father, Father, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? I mean, Isaac was have been making sacrifice with his father and he was wondering, he was amazed that they are going to make sacrifice unto God but they do not have any lamb that they were going to use for a burnt offering for God. So he asked his father about it. And Abraham said to his son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. Abraham answered to his son was exactly what Jesus did for us. He being God, the, the Son, provided himself as the lamb for our sins. So Abraham told his son that God would himself provide a lamb. And truly, God provided a lamb in his own son, that is Jesus Christ, who came as the lamb that taken away the sin of the world. So Jesus gave himself as the willing sacrifice for our sins. So John chapter 10, verse 17 to 18 says, Therefore thou my father loved me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment I have received of my father. So Jesus willingly gave himself to himself a sacrifice for our sins, that we through him might be saved. So glory be to Jesus and we thank him for what he did for us on the cross, that we through him might be saved. So verse 9, Genesis chapter 22, And they came to the place which God has told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order. And bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. So Isaac, as a picture of Jesus, opened not his mouth and willingly allowed his father 
to place him on the altar for God's sacrifice. His father may have said to him, Son, hold up your hands and let me tie you. You are a sacrifice to God today. Isaac held his hands, willingly allowed his father to use him as a sacrifice unto God. Jesus also, as a willing sacrifice for you and I, said, Father, it is your will. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours. Your will be done. So Jesus Christ willingly gave himself a sacrifice for our sin. Just as Isaac willingly, you know, gave himself to his father to tie him, put him on the burn altar. Alright, so let's continue Verse 10 to 13. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. So now, Abraham has already put his son, tied him, and put him on the bed altar. He drew the knife and then was ready to slay his son as a bed offering unto God. And the Bible said that the angel of the Lord stopped him and showed him a ram caught in a ticklet. By his horn behind him as a substitute. So the moment Abraham decided that he was going to do what God wanted him to do, to sacrifice his son, all of a sudden the Bible said the angel of the Lord stopped Abraham and said that he had seen that he feared the Lord and showed him a ram caught in a ticklet by the horn behind as a substitute for Isaac. So Abraham was ready to give his only son he loved as offering unto God, but God stopped him and offered his only begotten son as the Lamb of God who take away the sin of the world. You know, Abraham was ready to give up his son, but God did not allow him. But God, you know, at the right time, gave his only begotten son, that is Jesus Christ, who take away the sin of the world came to die for us. So the ram was caught by the ticklet, by the horn. So there wouldn't be any blemish in its flesh. Because there is, uh, God told him to cut it by the ticklet. So the ticklet means that the lamp was a grown, a matured lamp. So that now when the, the, the ticklet is cut, there will be no blemish in the animal so that he will be used as offering unto God. So also Jesus Christ, there was no blemish in the body of Jesus Christ. The Bible said that he, he knew no sin and there was no sin found against him. All the people that Jesus came before, there was nobody that could not lay any charge against him. Pilate said that I found no fault with him. Judas said that I have betrayed an innocent blood. So there was no one that was able to find a better accusation against Jesus because there was no sin. In Christ. So John chapter 19, verse 5 says, Then Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to him, Behold, the man. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the seed of his son. That is a picture of Jesus' sacrifice by the Father as our substitute. Now we go to verse 14. So Verse 14, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jerry, which means God provide. For God provided a ram for sacrifice in place of his son Isaac. Jesus is Jehovah Jerry. He is our provider. Our provision of salvation came from our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our provider and everything because Jesus Christ is the one. That has saved us. He is our savior. He is our deliverer. He is our rescuer. He is our healer. He is our strength. He is our salvation. He is our righteousness, our redemption, and our righteousness. Jesus is our all in all. So, Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 15 to 18. He said, Because of what Abraham did, God told him, God told him a second time that he will multiply his seed. As the stars of the heaven, and as the sun which is upon the seashore, 
and his seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and his seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And then, just as we read earlier, Galatians said that that seed is Christ. So through Christ, this promise of Abraham has been fulfilled. This promise that God made to Abraham has been fulfilled in Christ because it is through Christ that the whole world has been blessed because he has become the savior of the world. So Isaac was considered as if dead right after the sacrifice that God provided himself a love for Abraham. Right through that, Abraham, uh, Isaac was considered as if he was the one that was killed. After Abraham was prevented from sacrificing his son Isaac and provided a substitute, he, we did not hear any more about Isaac until he, he met his bride, Rebecca, in Genesis chapter 24, verse 64. Nothing was said about Isaac after the, uh, the sacrifice until he met his bride, Rebecca, in Genesis chapter 24, verse 64. Likewise, Christ died for our sins and resurrected for his bride, the church. And we are the bride, and he will never divorce us. Why? Because he hates divorce, and God will never. So if you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, you need to rest assured that you are saved once and for all. Because God will never divorce you. He said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said that I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. And nobody can take them out of my hand. And nobody can take them out of my father's hand. So these are some of the pictures of Jesus Christ.